Welcome back to Humankind Game. I'm not going to waste your time today. These are the five tips that I'll be discussing. As always, there'll be time cards in the description. Do like the video if you appreciate me being fast, and let's jump straight in. You can see here a hard boundary between the City of Thebes, which I'm currently uh, at war with its owner and intending to take it, uh, and the territory next to it, right? So if I hover over this, this is an administrative centre. So Thebes at least has its own territory, and then this border suggests that this is another one. There could be probably another one up here, looking at the size of it. Each territory that is attached to a city will cost you war score at the end of the war, right? The more territories you have to capture, whether they're, we're attached to a city or not doesn't matter, the higher the war score cost will be. So as you're fighting your opponent, it can be really worthwhile to move on to these administrative centers that are attached to cities that you intend to take and literally just ransack it. What that will do is it will destroy the administrative center, therefore detaching the territory from the city itself, reducing the cost of the territory when it comes time to end the war and settle the score, but also actually opening the territory up for you to simply claim a territory and attach an outpost to it during the war. Let me skip ahead and show you the outcome of this ransack and war declaration. Alrighty, so the ransack has been completed and you can see that this territory is now not owned by them at all. So while I'm at war, I can claim an outpost just to really rub it in their face. I'll claim it right on top of where I was and boom, hey presto. Now this, the territory of Bide, is entirely under my control. It's mine, and it's mine to keep for good. So don't just rely on war score to solve your wars. You can instead pillage and settle as you go. In fact, I can even turn this into an aggressive Ford city. How about it, right? Start to build some garrisons on the front line. If I had enough money, I could buy that instantly. And then, of course, instantly wage war on the city and take that down too, right? This is how you reduce the costs of war score at the end of a war, and also ensure that you're capturing and holding territories as you go. It's a strategy that most of us, including myself, overlook, but man, it is useful. Second up, I have a tip for you around hamlets, but do not sleep on this one. So just to remind you, this is what a hamlet does. It provides additional jobs for your citizens. The key to the hamlet though is, as you can see, I can place it anywhere. It does not need to be placed adjacent to an existing district or city. It just needs to be within my territory. The real strength of it is twofold. Firstly, of course, you can place it anywhere in the territory and start building districts around it that may have better adjacency bonuses with natural features uh, or perhaps strategic resources in the area. However, as you can see here, my real crux of the tip is around hamlets and island territories in particular. I can't build on those two tiles up north because they're not attached to my city, but I can build adjacent to hamlets. So what I've done here is destroy an existing hamlet by building a district over top of it. And now I'm going to move up to the next island chain. Boom, there goes my district over top of the hamlet. It's a common scorer. And now I'm going to select a hamlet again and move up to those next islands and do exactly the same thing. Watch as I place down a hamlet where I wouldn't have been able to place any other kind of district. And now once it's completed, I can build a district adjacent to it or build a district over top of it. You can repeat this forever and fill out your islands. For this tip, I'm going to take us into the society screen because it's about a civic. There are a lot of powerful ones, especially since humankind has been updated, but this one I think takes the cake. Before we talk about it, I'd just like to remind you that of course, this is my society screen. As you can see, I have pretty dominant <laughs> uh, influential pressure over most of the world. And that is important for this tip, but actually you only really need to be dominant over one foe and one city. And it could even, perhaps, be an independent city. Let me jump into the civics and show you. So, jump into show civics, then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six around to the civics related to cultural issues and art. And it's this one right up the top here, foreign customs, that I'm most interested in. I should note there is no branch connecting to it, so there's no civic prerequisite to unlock it, right? Uh, in case you didn't know, that's what those lines mean. Jumping into foreign customs, you can see I have two options, cultural respect and cultural eradication, and they are both insanely good. How do I get 
uh, foreign customs, you may ask? Well, it's relatively simple. It unlocks after you conquer a foreign city, i.e. a city not belonging to you, and the territory of that city must be under your influence. A reminder, of course, that we uh, increase our influence by building up that yield, our influence yield, keeping our stability high, building unique districts, and playing around with our society screen, perhaps shifting ourselves towards the liberty side to get more influence on emblematic districts. Anyway, back in to foreign customs. This is the real crux. Plus 100% fame earned per Aesthete Era Star. That means that every Influence Era Star, every Aesthete Era Star you earn is doubled. The fame gain is doubled. The quicker you can get cultural respect online, the better. It, it does encourage a little bit of early war and influence spreading, but man, it will pay off over the course of the game. You could, of course, also choose to go for cultural eradication, which prevents the speed, spread of other empires' spheres of influence. Geez, say that five times fast through controlled territory. So basically, if you're struggling to keep your societal control, you can enact this and nobody will be able to become influential over the territories that you control. And here is the civic in force. Take a look at this. I have two golden stars coming up. Neither are related directly to my affinity. The expansionist star is worth 300 and the aesthete star is now worth 600 fame. Thanks to that civic. If you can get it early, you can probably win using it alone and a couple of influence aesthetic cultures. My goodness, it is strong. Next up, this one involves redistributing population, growing cities, and getting more workers. And there are many use cases, but in my opinion, there are two key use cases. The first is for a smaller city. Let's take Mexico, for example. 16 pop, not terrible. But you can see I have a lot of empty jobs, right? So this money dude, if I drag and drop them into industry, you'll see my industry go up and down. Let's say I wanted to fill some more jobs in the city to increase its industry and therefore uh, decrease the time it takes me to build things. Well, of course, I can bring my units over here. Let's remind ourselves this is a 16 population city. What I'm going to do is disband one, disband two. These gunners actually count as two population, not one. They're a more advanced unit. And now you can see I have 20 population and more workers to play around with. Look, we have some extras. So now I can distribute these extras, for example, into industry, keeping everything else the same. And now I have roughly an extra 100 industry per turn purely from disbanding and redistributing some units and population. However, the fun doesn't stop there. If you are, for example, playing a limited time event or trying to grow a city to a ridiculously large population to complete some of the in-game challenges, you can take this to the extreme. Let's use Victoria, a 172 population city. Now, first and foremost, of course, I can build units in my other cities, like I'm doing with these ones, and send them across to Victoria and disband them, right? So here's Victoria, here's my units. If I shift click across all four, I can just disband them all at once. Boom, now Victoria has 180 population. But the fun doesn't stop there because don't forget you can also send populations across the sea. You might notice I have a lot of boats here. That is not by mistake. Take a look up here in Flea, for example, where I've decided I basically want to redistribute the population of the city in its entirety. What I'm going to do is just shift click a whole load of boats. And as you can see here, I'm already playing this out. Here are some more populations from the city of Flea. Look at them all going. Watch as I disband, let's say, I don't know, 10 cogs. Look, these two are in range as well. Let's do them. And let's do these two as well. There we go. So that was 14 cogs. Oh my goodness, we can make it 20 plus two gunners. Brilliant. All right, so we'll just disband all of them. You can see I have more here to go. And we've disbanded them into the city of grow, 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 grow. And then of course, using our influence, we can absorb grow into Victoria. And just like that, through some clever redistributing of populations, look, here's some more. I've managed to boost Victoria up from what it was at a 170 population city. Now, thanks to redistributing my populations through units and of course, merging the city of Grow, right? The two key ways to redistribute populations. You can see now that Victoria has indeed made it up and well above 